Dr. Robert Chastanay. I am a private practice weight loss surgeon. I, my company is Chesapeake Weight Loss Consultants. I work through the bond support system and operate at Maryview Medical Center. Today I'd like to talk about the surgical treatment of obesity. Obesity is a chronic disease of uh, life-threatening, it's costly, genetically related, and let's make no mistakes about it. Everything we do here in this office is to treat your medical problems. This is not to get people skinny to put you in a bikini. This is to make you healthy, and what we'll learn is actually live longer and make many of your medical problems go away. One thing I like to explain to people is when people get heavy and they develop extra fat, it is not just skin deep. It involves all the organs of your body, around your neck, around your heart, in your liver. And when these areas get full of fat, the, the body doesn't work as well as it should, and then people start to get medical problems. So let's continue on. Um, when we talk about surgical treatment of obesity, we talk about what's called a body mass index. Now, on the screen here, you can see this is how you calculate it. A much easier way is just to Google BMI, body mass index, and then we'll spit out a number. Normal is between 18 and a half and 25. Overweight is 25 to 30, and anything over 30 is considered obese. In America, only one-third of the people are actually normal weight now. One-third are overweight, and a, and a full one-third of people are now obese. And it is that last category, people that are obese, that would be candidates for weight loss surgery. And in fact, your BMI must be between 35 and 40, associated with one medical problem to be a candidate for surgery. If it is over 40, you don't even have to have a medical problem to have surgery. What this next slide shows and what I'm going to explain to you is that when people get heavy, they actually die at a younger age. In fact, uh, someone who is age um, uh, 25 to 40 um, actually dies much, much sooner than someone who is not. The number I remember is a 20-year-old man with a BMI over 40 will die on an average 12 years sooner than his, his uh, younger counterpart. So we're not actually just making you healthier, we're actually helping you live longer. And this chart also shows as you are in the normal range, your risk of dying is low. But as you get heavier, your risk of dying from all the medical problems that develop goes up dramatically. This list shows a partial list, actually, of all the medical problems that develop once you get heavy, such as sleep apnea, high blood pressure, diabetes, high fat, cholesterol, um, infertility in young women, heart disease, something we call urinary stress incontinence. If you laugh, sneeze, and cough, and you lose some urine, that is not the normal part of aging. That can be made much better if you reduce your weight. Acid reflux, cancer. We actually know that uh, there are several cancers, especially breast, uterine, and colon cancer that increases as you get heavier. This is something we didn't even know when I was in medical school many years ago. But, it, but in fact, these cancers are at a lesser rate once you lose weight. So why do we lose weight? Well, of course, it is to improve your, your health, to make your medical problems go away, and you must balance the risk of surgery versus the risk of not having surgery. At Maryview, we are a center of excellence, okay? And what that means is that we have all the specialists at the hospital, the, in the operating room, special furniture, special equipment to take the best care of you. And the National Institute of Health, back in 1991, they're the ones who set the criteria of who are candidates for surgery. And as a center of excellence, we follow all their guidelines. Specifically, if your BMI is between 35 and 40, you have to have one major medical problem related to your weight, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, or sleep apnea. If your BMI is over 40, you don't have to have any medical problems at all. Who are candidates for surgical uh, weight loss through the bond support system? Well, you have to meet the BMI criteria. You have to quit smoking because we now know that people who smoke have a much, much higher risk of medical complications and problems after surgery. You have to have a de be dedicated to a lifestyle that is healthy afterward. And a lot of this we will teach you ahead of time. I use the nutritionists, uh, the registered dietitians, um, through the bond support system to teach you before surgery how to eat properly, how to read labels, and this 
helps ensure the proper success afterward. I would like to speak to you about the three different surgical options, and all of these are available through the bond support system that I perform. Everything in, is done laparoscopically. What that means is, instead of having an, a big up and down incision like they used to do in the past, everything is done minimally invasive through small holes. The advantage of that is less pain, less likely to get infection, less likely to get hernias. Um, nowadays, this is how all bariatric surgery is done. And the three options that we have are what we call the band, the laparoscopic sleeve, and the laparoscopic Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. All three of these options work such as we alter your anatomy so you cannot eat as much as you could before. You can eat a smaller amount. The sleeve and the gastric bypass, in addition, change the internal hormones that are made by the stomach and the intestines so it resets the, the, the set point in your brain when you become hungry. So people with the sleeve and the gastric bypass, they are not as hungry afterward. Now, in time, your appetite will come back a little bit, but it's never quite as strong as it was before surgery. And um, so, so all operations work restrictive, um, but in addition, the sleeve and the gastric bypass have a hormonal component. The gastric bypass also has a small malabsorptive component meaning that as the food goes through, you don't quite absorb all the calories. This chart shows the breakdown of the operations over time. And as the years gone by, the gastric band has kind of fallen out of favor now. Less than 10% of the operations done in this country are the band. And it, partly because the band does not have the hormonal effects as the other operations. And the weight loss is not as predictable nor as good as the other two. The sleeve actually has supplanted the gastric bypass as the number one weight loss surgery in this country. But let me just start here talking about the band. The band was first started in Europe in uh, 1985. It was um, approved here in America in 2001. And the way the band works, it's nothing more than a glorified balloon that is put around the very top part of the stomach. It is connected to this tube that goes to this port that is under your skin. You will not see the port, but you can feel it. And what happens is after the surgery, six weeks later, you come into the office here and using a special needle through your skin, I inject saline into this port. It goes around this band and it tightens up the band so it's actually no bigger. The opening is no bigger than a pencil. So when you eat your food, it goes into this little pouch. It stretches the pouch that sends signal to your brain um, causing you to not be hungry and not to eat as much. The food then must slowly trickle through this opening into your stomach. The problem with the band, quite frankly, is that if you do not chew your food well and eat very, very slowly, uh, people have problems with their band. They can have nausea, vomiting. If you eat a salad with a small piece of carrot and you don't chew it well, you're going to vomit that up. So uh, that's one of the reasons why people have steered away from the band in recent years. When we talk about weight loss surgery, we also talk something what we call an excess weight loss. So where you start out with your normal weight and then your ideal body weight, that difference is called your excess body weight. Now with the band, in the first year afterward, you'd expect to lose about a third of that weight loss difference. The next year it might go to 40 and then it tops off at about 45%. Very few people lose more with the band. We'll see with the other operations, the weight loss is generally much greater. The next operation I want to explain to you is the sleeve gastrectomy. And this is now the number one operation for at least the last two years in this country. This operation is different. There is no implantable plastic parts. What this does is we actually make a cut, 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 and we remove this big part of your stomach. So your stomach, instead of the, being the size of a, a Coke, liter bottle of Coke, it's now like the shape of a banana, much, much smaller. So people can't eat as much and they full, be, feel full much quicker. What we've actually learned nowadays is that this big part of your stomach here makes a hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin is the only known hormone that actually makes you hungry. So after this operation, people just don't have an appetite. So they eat far less. In time, your appetite will come back a little bit, but it's never quite as great as it was ahead of time. So with this operation, most people in the first year, year and a half, will lose about 75% of the difference of your excess weight. 
Now, in time, because that stomach tube grows and stretches, people can eat a little more. So there's a little bit more weight regain with the sleeve. And in my hands, most people average off at about 60% of their excess weight loss. This is a good operation because if you do not have any implantable plastic parts, it does not alter your digestion downstream, so there's no malabsorption associated with this. After the first month, I allow my patients to go back to regular pills and all the regular medications. Now, the next operation is the gastric bypass. We have been doing this operation since the late 1960s. Initially, it was done through a big open operation. Nowadays, it's all done laparoscopically. The gastric bypass is different in that when you eat your food, it goes into a small pouch that is no bigger than an egg. Um, we cut across the stomach just like it's shown here. And then downstream, I cut across your intestines I turn this on the side, this gets hooked to here, and then the tip of my finger, so to speak, gets hooked up to the very uh, proximal stomach. So as you eat, the food goes into this little pouch. It then goes down this way into your intestines. That small little pouch does get bigger and stretch with time. Eventually, most people can eat a small meal, like uh, the size of a, a lean cuisine type of meal. What you will be taught and, and what you're going to hear over and over is that when you eat your food after any of these operations, you must eat your protein first, okay? So your chicken, your fish, your eggs, your cheese, you eat that first. At Thanksgiving, you don't fill up on mashed potatoes and green beans. You have to eat your chicken and your turkey first. The food then will trickle down this way and go into your intestines. Now, this operation, you would expect to lose about 75% of the difference between where you start and your ideal body weight. So that's your excess weight loss. And it may take a year, year and a half to get to that point, but that's my goal. This operation, just like the sleeve, does reduce the ghrelin levels as well. So people just don't have an appetite after surgery. Now in time, your appetite again will come back, but it's never as strong as it used to be. Those hormonal changes will also cause taste bud changes. People tell me after this operation, things tend to taste too sweet, okay? Those same hormonal changes also dramatically change the, uh, the way you process glucose or sugar. And for that reason, people who are diabetic after this gastric bypass, remarkably, that medical problem gets better. In fact, many of the people who have diabetes go home with absolutely no medication from the hospital. Uh, several years ago, um, the term for weight loss surgery, bariatric surgery, was actually changed to bariatric and metabolic surgery because of the drastic improvements uh, of diabetes and, and, and sugars and things like that. So, uh, so I personally think that the gastric bypass is underutilized for people with these medical problems, especially if you have diabetes. I would strongly recommend the gastric bypass. So again, um, the recovery after this operation, for the band, you're generally in the hospital just for one night. For the sleeve and gastric bypass, it may be one or two nights, depending on how well you do. The day after surgery, I have my patients undergo a upper GI where we watch as you drink some liquid on x-rays and we watch it as it goes through your intestines. If everything is well, then you would start drinking liquids. Um, and I send you home only if you prove to me that you can drink enough so you do not become dehydrated. Generally, I see all my patients back one week here in the office to make sure everything is well, and then one month later. The usual restrictions depend on what you do, what type of job you do, but in general, I recommend my patients not lift more than 15 pounds for the first two weeks. As far as time off from work, two weeks is also a good number to um, tell your employer. It depends on what you do. I've had some people go back to work as soon as one week after surgery. I have some people um, who have to wait a full month, depending on what their job entails. This slide shows the risks of you dying after surgery, and it's gotten very, very low with bariatric surgery. The risk of you dying within 30 days after surgery is now one to two out of a thousand. I'm gonna knock on a lot of wood right now because I've never had a patient die from my weight loss surgery. But the risk is there, it's very, very low. It's actually lower than having your gallbladder removed much lower than having a hip replacement, 0.9%, and heart surgery is over 3% risk of dying. So bariatric surgery is much, much safer than it's been in the past, and a lot of this has to do with 
the, neck, the way we do it now, the, the laparoscopic route. Here I talk about the decision making for which operation is the best of you. Of course, um, we will talk in person when you come see me in the office. You do not need to make any decision right away because the evaluation and the tests that I do beforehand are the same irregardless of which operation you perform. The gastric bypass has the best weight loss over time and if you are very, very heavy with the body mass index over 50 or even 60, that's probably what I would recommend for you. Again, it's the best at treating your diabetes. In fact, many people, as I mentioned, have what we call complete remission, where the diabetes goes away completely. If you have terrible heartburn, that's also a very, very good operation for you. The sleeve gastrectomy, as mentioned, is the most popular nowadays, but the one drawback is, is that it can sometimes make heartburn worse. So if you are on Nexium or, or Miprazole or take a lot of antacid pills before surgery, that may, may not be the best operation for you. The adjustable gastric band is the only operation that is totally and re very easily reversible. And quite honestly, that has fallen out of favor and very few people get their bands. In the last three years, I must say that I've probably taken out more bands and converted them to different operations than I've actually put in. So, but that still is an option if, if you really, really want that particular operation. The results of bariatric surgery, you must uh, factor the weight loss, is very, very good, but it's m more importantly to make your medical problems better and to, and to make you live longer and to make you have a, a happier, healthier life, to allow people to do all the things that they couldn't do in the past, get down on the floor, play with their grandkids, go to amusement parks, um, r ride that roller coaster. Uh, it makes your work and your personal life um, changed dramatically. The resolution of medical problems are great after weight loss surgery, respiratory uh, problems, especially asthma gets better, diabetes may be resolved completely about 86% uh, of the time in those people who have a gastric bypass. High blood pressure isn't as reliably cured with this operation, only in the 60 to 70% range. That's because there's a much higher genetic component to high blood pressure. If your mother, father, brother, and sister, if everybody's on blood pressure medicines, you will probably too. Although you may need less medicines, you may not need three, you may need just one. But it, it generally does get better. Uh, heart disease gets better. Stress incontinence, that urine leak we talked about, that goes away in a lot of uh, people. Arthritis, especially in the weight-bearing joints, the lower back, the knees, the hips, the feet, that all gets better. When I was in the Navy, the orthopedic surgeons was the number one referring uh, physicians to our bariatric clinic for the people that needed knee replacements, hip replacements. Um, high blood fats or high cholesterol, that gets better as well. And, and after six months, many people come off their uh, anti-cholesterol medicines as well. Heartburn, reflux disease gets much better, especially with the gastric bypass. So some frequently asked questions, um, what results can I expect? Well, again, for the sleeve and the bypass, it's about 75% excess body wet, weight loss in the first year, year and a half. The sleeve patients tend to have a little bit of weight regain after the first year, um, but it's, it's very, very good. How long in the hospital? Generally one or two days at most. Um, how long should you be off from work? Generally one to two weeks at most. It depends on what you do. How long does surgery take? Well, for me, the band is less than an hour. The sleeve is about one hour and 15 minutes, and the gastric bypass, that's the longest. That's about two hours and 15 minutes. It's all a blink of an eye to you. You're totally asleep for all these operations. At Maryview, we have a new long-acting medication that I put at all the, the little whole trocar sites, and that keeps those areas numb for the first three days. That makes lots of your pain go away. Should you throw up all the time? No. In fact, uh, most people should not throw up all the time. If you eat too fast or too quickly after any of these operations, you will not feel well. And that's one of the things that you have to learn about before surgery, is learn to, to eat slowly and to, and to chew your food very, very well. Should you have diarrhea all the time? Absolutely not. 
Should you eat baby food all the time? No. For the first month, I do have my patients have a soft diet, which consists of chicken salad, tuna salad, egg salad, that type of thing. But after that, we slowly advance you to more regular foods. I will say that the one food that does not go well after surgery is white fluffy bread. It kind of turns into a glob and just doesn't pass well. So if you go to Subway after surgery, I want you to open your sandwich, eat your lettuce, tomato, your meat, all the good stuff on the inside, throw that bread away. You really don't need it afterward. Other foods that sometimes call problems are rice and spaghetti. And quite honestly, I would just assume you not eat a lot of those carbohydrates afterward. You have to, again, learn to eat your meat, your protein source first. And then if you have some room left over and you want some vegetables or salad, that's fine. Can I get pregnant after surgery? Yes. In fact, um, ladies that have problems getting pregnant beforehand, they can easily become pregnant after surgery. And the recommendation is not to get pregnant for at least one year after surgery. Surgery, is it dangerous? Yes, all surgery is dangerous. There is a risk of, of major problems. And we will talk about these one-on-one -on -one before you choose which operation you would like. But, um, but again, the risk of surgery is, is far, great, far excuse me, less than what it was. The risk of surgery is far less than what it was in the past. Can it be reversed? The only operation easily reversible was the band. What uh, to ask about your bariatric program? Well, here at, uh, through the Bond Support System, our hospitals are centers of excellence. We do many, many cases every year. We have all the specialists for you. Um, we also have support groups every month. In fact, we require you to go to at least one support group before you have surgery. We, we want you to talk to people who've had these operations and, and decide for yourself um, which might be best for you. We want you to hear from people who've had operations in the past what, is, what the operations entail and how they like, what they, what they like, what they don't like. So for success, you must know that surgery is only one part of the puzzle. You have to learn to eat properly, to exercise, to not drink sweet liquids between meals, and it's a lot of education goes into this. One thing I tell you, my patients is that the important things you will hear more than once. You'll hear it from me, you'll hear it from the nutritionist, you'll hear it at the support group meeting. So we want your success. Surgery is just one part of the puzzle, um, but learning to make healthy food choices, learning to increase your activity, coming to a support group, these are all important things for that success. I want to invite you to, to contact my office and arrange for a one-on-one -on -one appointment where we will discuss you and your medical problems and which option may be best for you. Again, you don't have to make any decision right now. Thank you for watching this presentation. Now I'd like you to continue watching the registered dietitian talk about eating and drinking after the surgery for success.